Welcome to Free Flight Whistle Stop Tour Part 1. We're going to start in the admin section. There are some things we need to enter that the timekeepers need to know about before flying commences today. Administrators will spend a lot of time in the calendar view because it's all about managing the airfield. Today is no exception as we need to enter a couple of visitor flights so that the timekeepers know about them when they arrive. So we immediately click on today's date in the calendar and that brings us up our new visitor booking form, which we then proceed to fill in with some details, the name on the voucher, uh, the product code, which of course are all DLGC product codes, you can add as many as you like, and then we need to indicate whether they've paid or not. First of all, we'll put the time in that they're going to fly. Selecting a payment method will automatically complete the amount paid field. Come back to the calendar view and we'll do another one because I want to leave one as unpaid. I want to show you what happens with those when we finally get to the timekeeper section at the launch point. Now you can't tell from here, but the product file, each product has a predefined duration so that when that product is selected on any one of the forms, then it will automatically block out the correct amount of time in the calendar. These single flight vouchers are going to block out one hour of time. Now we're going to drill down into the day view and then the week view. Um, the usual thing happens, the weather closes in, somebody doesn't fly. We need to move them from one day to another. I'm going to show you how quickly it is to easily drag something to a new place. Uh, and then that just automatically carries the flight over to another day. Just going to put it back because we need it for today's exercise. Okay, now I'm a member. I'm just leaving home. I want to check out the weather and let the club know that I'm coming, see what else is happening on the day. As this is the subject of a larger tutorial later, I'll just let the music run and you can have a look at the screen at what happens. And if you want to know why we call it Dave, in the UK it's a TV channel, the home of witty banter.
Okay, let's get ready to fly. And as you can see, we're using a tablet here at the launch point. It could be a PC. Uh, the first thing we have to do is to record all the people who are on duty that day from the instructors to the timekeepers to the tug pilots to the winch drivers. Uh, I'm not going to go into exactly how you do that now. The next thing we need to do is to record the weather. Uh, this may be required as a, um, this may be a legal requirement. Uh, it certainly is in the UK, uh, just in case there are any incidents that need to be reported to the authorities. And just a quick note on navigation, uh, the tablet is split into two panes, the left and the right, and to see information that you can't read, you just simply swipe with your finger, uh, and as you saw just a minute ago, the, the, the screen will move. Uh, first thing we want to do is have a look at how many visitors that we have got today, and as you notice as the list pops up, uh, the two people that we entered in the administrative section are now plainly visible. One of them is red. That's the one we uh, decided hadn't paid and needs to pay when he arrives. So we now look at the pilots come to fly and uh, if you recall back to the uh, mobile app, that's me. I put myself on as I was on my way to the club. But let's get the first training flight of the day up in the air and we'll click on the club flights folder. You'll see a drop down which lists a number of different types of flights that you can enter. And these are standard training flight or a, a solo flight, a guest flight, which is a guest of a member, a mutual or a passenger flight, that's where there's no training involved, and a returning temporary member. So we'll click the standard flight button and we'll enter a training flight, which requires just three pieces of information. A part of the surname of the P2, the pupil, part of the surname of the P1, the instructor, and part of the identity of the aircraft. Once you've got those pieces of information entered, we just click the OK button, uh, create the flight, and that will be ready and waiting for us at the launch point to, uh, to launch it. When we go back to the screen, we just click on the active tab and there you'll see the flight and oops, there's a problem because the line is in red. What we need to do now is click the little plus symbol to get the alert up and always honor the alerts. It may indicate that the flight can't take place. In this case, it says that the P1's medical has expired and also the P1 might need a check flight. Now these are deliberate because this is a whistle stop tour and I don't have time to mess around showing you all the different uh, alerts. So when the aircraft starts to roll, just click the clock and the uh, system will send the timer down to the tablet and the aircraft will be in flight. So let's bring the visitor list back up onto the screen and let's get the first of our visitors flying. We click on the fly button the form pops up, the P2 name is already completed for you. Just need to fill in the P1 details of the instructor and the aircraft ident, ident exactly as you did for a standard club flight. Click on the active flights tab again and you'll see the flights all there ready to launch. Uh, in the same way that we did before, in a second, we'll go back to the trial lesson tab, sorry, visitor tab, we call them trial lessons, and uh, we'll just take some money from the line in red, which is a person, if you recall, uh, hadn't paid for the flight. So all we need to do is select the method of payment, and you'll find that once that's been ticked, that the amount paid will automatically be filled in. That's all you need to do. You've collected the money, you go back to the list, the line is no longer red, it's black, so we can continue with the rest of the day. So if we now click back on the active tab, and we'll just uh, click the clock, and then the uh, visitor flight is in the air. And that's all there is to it. Landing a flight is normally as simple as clicking the clock. <clears throat> However, 
there are times when sometimes a landing aircraft gets missed. So we have an edit button that allows you to bring the fall and manually enter the landing time for an aircraft. And you'll notice straight away that the flight disappears from the active tab and you will now find it in the completed tabs file complete with the duration of the flight and the ca automatically calculated fee for the flight. And this applies to both uh, winch launches and aerotow launches. With an aerotow, it's sometimes necessary to go back into the flight afterwards to edit the actual height of the aerotow, but we'll deal with that in a different tutorial later on. Just make a note of the names, the duration and the fees, because in a second we're going to go back into the mobile app uh, and see how the member deals with payments, etc. And then we're going to track it into the admin system. As always, we enter in the calendar view and we can quickly check the uh, visitor flights for the day, make sure everything's okay, all the payments have been recorded and that the flights taken uh, are again correctly recorded against the flights allowed for that particular uh, uh, product. Next, the administrator can call up the uh, entire flying sh log sheets for the day uh, and check on each individual entry to make sure none have been missed. Occasionally, there may be a query from a member uh, to say that the th he thinks the flight time is wrong or the launch height was wrong. Uh, but whatever reason, this is always available to the administrator and they can make any edits they like to this. Uh, they can recalculate the fees. Uh, they can check the trial lesson flights again to make sure everybody's paid all from one handy user interface. I'll be going into this in more detail later on in uh, an in-depth tutorial. Uh, next we're going to check the individual member records for both myself and the instructor. We'll be looking particularly at the, uh, the logbook and the transaction list just to ensure uh, for your own peace of mind that the transactions that we recorded at the launch point have arrived into the system in the correct places. Had I have continued with the PayPal payments, we can honestly say that the complete end-to-end -end transaction from launching the flight to paying it was a totally seamless operation uh, with no user intervention and therefore a complete saving of um, maximum time for all the administrative staff involved in the club. So that's enough talking from me. Uh, the video will continue for about another 30 or 40 seconds. Do join me in part two when we'll have a look in particular uh, at what the uh, treasurer and the finance people within the club see and how all of this translates into the month end reports. Again, providing um, a great time saving for everybody involved. 
See you in part two.